Hi Angels, this is Rolanda Sumner and I am the owner and founder of Butter Angels. And today we have our hair care subject matter expert, Sharon Osamanki. She is the CEO and founder of Dr. Herbal Hair Care. And she's gonna sit down and explain to us why her products are so important. She's gonna tell us her journey. And the wonderful thing about it is she is her own client. You're gonna learn her about how she came up with her products, why she came up with, with her products, and why you should try them. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I use one of her products right now and I absolutely love it. I'm a new dreadhead and I'm like a, a year and a half and maybe a little bit more. And so I'm still looking for products to use that are fuss free and that won't break me up my forehead out and all that kinds of stuff. And really, I'm just, I'm in love with her oils. So without further ado, I'm going to let Sharon speak. And she's going to tell us about her, her journey. And she's going to start off by telling us about her hair care products and how she got start, started. So listen up. Hi, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to give you a big shout out for doing this and having me uh, during, for your interview sessions. I really, really appreciate it. I can't speak highly enough about um, what it is that this means to me and to be in your presence because you're doing such a phenomenal job and I've learned so much from you and so I humbly say thank you. Well thank you, thank you so much. Um, so why don't you tell us because you have an awesome story about how you got started on your hair care product and your hair care products have shown results in others. Yes. So please, please share your story. Thank you. So um, I work at UIC. I've been there 17 years. And then I decided that, you know, I wanted to branch off and start my business. The reason why I wanted to start my hair care business is because my journey, oh, about 20 years, 22 years ago, I lost my hair. And it was very horrifying. I'm going to show you guys a picture. Um, that is the initial loss of my hair. It was around the edges and I was trying to find products that would work to help me grow my hair back and everything that I was researching and going into stores purchasing nothing was working not one simple thing and I was very frustrated and I was reading all these labels and they were saying that they were natural organic it could do this and it can do that and a lot of it was false advertisement I'm not saying that all of it was, but the stuff that I was trying, it was, it was really false advertisement. It was saying it was organic and it was natural and it wasn't. Unfortunately, in the society and the world that we live in, a lot of that tends to happen. So I started doing my own research and I came up with a remedy, a recipe that worked for me. Um, it, took, it took a minute and I was really obsessed and very um, had a very tight schedule of how I would put this, apply this oil on my hair when I concocted <laughs> the, the recipe. And so it was over, I kid you not, it was over 50 oils that I would massage my hair with at night around the edges and then at the scalp in the middle, the back sec section. So once I started doing it, I would say I started seeing results within a couple of weeks, I could see little glimmers of new growth, which was so exciting for me. I'm like, oh my God, I did this. And so fast forward, of course, my hair grew back, as you can see, and also within the photos on my website, you can also um, see the results. But fast forward, I wanna say about five years ago, my son, oldest son, he lost his hair probably at the center, at the back and at the center top of his head. And he was devastated. And so guess what I did? Mommy mixed up something. <laughs> yeah, I mixed up something and his hair grew back. And he was the one who said, mom, you need to go into business. So all the products that I've ever used, there were pro they were products that I mixed up and made for my, myself, someone in my family, my daughter, who is a college student. She's never had a perm in her hair. She's always had natural hair and her hair is beautiful. Um, and it's because of me, <laughs> the products that I've made and used on her hair. So that's originally how it came about. So um, I wanna step back a little bit 
if you don't mind sharing, why did your hair fall out? I, my husband is Nigerian, been married 30 years. Um, Yay, that, that is good. <laughs> so originally I went to Africa probably when I was 21 and I got my hair braided over there. Mm. And when I came back to the States, I took the braids down and my sides were clean. The hair just started falling out. I was completely devastated. I didn't know what to do. And that was when I started doing the research and that story I just told you and put together all the oils and it grew my hair back. That was the first time. The second time I lost my hair, it was due to styling again, hair weaves, um, different styles that I had been trying. Again, it started thinning around the edges. I started using the oil again and it grew back. The third time I lost my hair, it wasn't the edges. My hair started coming out in clumps. It was just breaking, breaking and thinning and thinning. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I went to the doctor and the doctor said that I was going through some hormonal issues. That At that time, I had, um, did I have three? I have three children. I think I had two at that time. Or no, I take it back. I did have my daughter then. So I was, I breastfed all my children year plus. And for some reason with my daughter, when I was nursing her, I don't know what was going on with my body. My hormones was really whacked and my hair just started thinning. And I was devastated again, but yet again, I started using uh, the hair oil. And here's the little hair oil. <laughs> I started using my hair oil and it grew back again. So I know that there are times when stress can cause hair loss. I know that there are times when you can be on medication and it can cause hair loss. I've been through many, many reasons of why my hair is thinning or breaking or falling out. And I know that depression also can have a effect on your hair falling out. There's so many different reasons why that your hair can fall out. I think for me, I, I sort of started thinking about it. Like if I, if I can make my hair, if I can help my hair grow back from the hair oils that I mixed up, then I know that I had to match what I was doing outside of my body, inside of my body, which is mind over matter. So a lot of times when I would apply this hair oil to my hair, I would be in a very, very peaceful state. I would meditate while I was massaging this oil in my hair. And I know that my body, all of that, you know, it connects it helps to support your journey and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Because if your thoughts are off, most of the time, everything else is off. So that's how I supported my, what I was doing outside of my body to support my hair growth and to make sure that I connected to my mind, my thoughts, everything. It had to be connected and correlated in order for it to work. And that's a big, big thing that people kind of miss that step. I tell all my clients, all my customers, if you're going to go on this journey to get your hair to grow back, you got you to gotta first start here. It starts with the mind. Thank you for bringing that up because I, I know I, I'm guilty of this sometime myself, thinking that you can just put something topical on and it's going to fix the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. And, and I, we met in a vegan group. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody should be vegan. There's a reason I'm not vegan yet. I'm a vegetarian. There's a reason I had to change to vegetarian. I had a health scare recently. So I had to make a, a major change, but I'm sure you advocate healthy diet and like the complete holistics behind being healthy and have healthy hair, like a healthy diet, a healthy lifestyle, healthy mentality and such. I'm, Absolutely. Absolutely. If I could just touch on that for a minute. Um, I want to say about seven years ago, I had a, a completely very, very frightening hair health scare. And I was actually rushed to the hospital by my middle son. And if, if I can, I was bleeding out, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I was a vegetarian then. Mm -hmm. And once I was admitted 
they wanted to do a hysterectomy and I told them no, passing out. I was like, no. <laughs> and they're like, uh, ma'am, <laughs> you're about to die here. I'm like, no, you can calm this down in other ways. And they did. And I stayed there for three days. And between meditation and prayer, I said that I was going to walk out of there and cure myself of fibroids and some other things that was going on. Mm -hmm. And I did. And the only way I did that, and I'm not advocating that everyone becomes vegan either. The only way I did that, accomplished getting rid of my fibroids and, you know, no, no longer bleeding out was to um, eliminate mucus and dairy products from my diet. Yeah. Inflammation. They, absolutely. They cannot, till this day, tell me where my fibroids went. And so I know that... If you have a cleaner diet, I'm not saying you should completely throw everything out, but you should at least look at what it is that you're eating and maybe minimize certain things just so you can have a healthy start with your, your body, your, your hair and everything. The journey can be a lot better if you just eliminate certain things. Yes. And I mean, that's true with skin as well. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask you is, and this is something I didn't, I, I didn't prep you for. I didn't let you know. I was just thinking about it in the car today. But I have a, a myriad of people in the group. And you're in the group. You see the, the different cultures we have. So we have African-Americans. We have some women with um, biracial children. My daughter is biracial. Um, and then we have, um, you know, Caucasian women with, like, ethnic Caucasian women, Italian, Cuban what different products would you suggest? Because that's a myriad of different hair types right there. And it's really difficult to find a hair product or anything that will, a hair line that will address all of those differences. Absolutely. You're absolutely, and by the way, your daughter is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and your husband is handsome too. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, I get this question all the time. And the best way that I can answer this question, first and foremost, is to say that my products are not only used by African-American women. Largely, they are. Mm -hmm. I have clients that are from Mexico, that are from Saudi Arabia, you name it. Um, recently, I did a vending event, and there were some Caucasian women at this event. And they walked up to me and started questioning me about my products and they purchased the products. And I got so many wonderful reviews back from them telling me how wonderful the product is working for them, how they have recommended to others within their family and their network. And so I wasn't surprised. I know a lot of people may be surprised, but I wasn't surprised because my, my products and a lot of other products are not just for African-American women. There's something within my line that is for everyone. And I recommend that people step outside of that box, you know, that we put ourselves into. I know that um, Shea Moisture, I think it was, just went through that crazy um, publicity uh, about a video that they, some kind of um, video they put out about it was a very stereotype kind of video because people were surprised to see that they had Caucasian women and women of um, a different ethnicity. I can't remember. And they, got, they went under a lot of heat because the black community has supported Shea Moisture for so long. And it was like, did you really just put <coughs> all these ethnic, ethnicities in this video when we have supported you for so long. And I felt so bad for them because, you know, yes, when they initially started, they were selling to primarily African-American women, but people, some, a lot of people are coming out of that box and thinking that this particular product is only for one particular person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a bunch of clients who are from Mexico who use my Not Your Mama's Hair Grease and they love it. They tell me they use it to flat iron their hair and ever since they've been flat ironing their hair with this product, their hair is no longer breaking. Well, I'm like, fabulous. Yeah. So if I put this in a box and say it's only for one nationality, they're mm -hmm. missing out on a great product. 
And so I think we need to step outside of that and just understand that there's something within everything in this world for everyone and it doesn't just have to be for one nationality. So yes, Caucasian women can certainly use my products and I, I encourage them to call me personally and I would talk to them about what I would rec re recommend based on what they're going through. And everybody, I would definitely, um, I, I would encourage you to do so. Um, she will call you back. I mean, that's how we end up getting in contact. We were in the same group and either she like texts me or I, I think I might've texted her or something like that. And we end up having a conversation and like many weeks later, <laughs> you know, we bought each other's products and we're in each other's groups and she's very personable. If you look on her social media, particularly her Instagram, but um, Facebook too, you'll see videos of her with her customers. So if you have questions, um, definitely take advantage of that and, and reach out to her and ask her specifically, um, what is the top three um, pieces of advice that you should, you want to give to us? Absolutely. My number one is, I talked about it last night. I was doing a um, live chat in my group, which is called My Herbal my herbal beautiful hair and i was talking about steamers and a lot of people don't know what that is and i'm not going to tell you i'm going to go to the point of what the question is <laughs> if you want to know more about the steamers find my group guys so but one of the biggest things that i tell people is that you should never go over the allotted time on any product the label if the label says condition your hair for five minutes don't condition your hair for seven minutes if the label says deep condition your hair for 20 minutes don't go over that i personally know especially my african-american family um i personally know people who will condition their hair overnight i know people who will walk around the house with a plastic conditioner cap on their head for two hours and the label said six minutes or whatever that is one of the worst things you can do to your hair it's like your fingernails you put them in water and when you take your nails out of the water what happens they're soft, they're soft they break they crack they do a lot of damage to, uh, the water does a lot of damage to your fingernails and that's what happens with conditioner your fingernails are keratin and so is your hair and so when you leave that conditioner on your hair you are breaking down your hair initially you do see like this soft feel mm -hmm. and you're like oh my god that conditioner was like really the bomb it's not a lot of times what happens is people will end up going to get their hair cut like months later and they'll say oh girl i'm going to get my hair cut because um i wanted to get that halle berry look and no, your hair broke and got damaged because of that conditioner, unfortunately. And so that's my biggest uh, uh, advice that I can give people. Don't, don't use the product allotted uh, be, beyond the time that's allotted on the label. Okay. The other thing is, I know a lot of people do not like hair oils. And as you just mentioned, my hair oil, I love my hair oil. I have uh, two, three different kinds. What were you going to say, sweetie? It, it, it doesn't, it's not heavy. It's very dry. Um, and I have a review that I did for her where I was like, okay, well, I put it in on Sunday and I'm expecting to still feel it on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And, you know, Wednesday came and I was like, well, it's not on my fingertips. So I put more in thinking I didn't put in enough. And what I learned was it's just a dry oil. It's like, um, you know, my, my skincare products, you know, you rub it in and it's gone. So it's the first time I've ever used a dry hair oil that moisturized my hair. It's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. So what I, what I try and encourage people, if your hair is oily, no, you shouldn't be putting a lot of oil on your hair. However, you should put some oil on your hair. A lot of people are walking around with damaged hair because their hair is dry. And so you should apply it, if your hair is too oily, you should only apply it maybe once a week. And if your hair is not oily, you should apply it a couple of times a week because if you get a good quality, organic, chemical-free 
This oil will do your hair wonders. It replenishes your hair. It supports the growth. It supports a lot of things that you won't have to go to a beauty shop and get your hair cut, you know, into a Halle Berry look <laughs> because it's so important for us to protect our hair the same way we do with our skin. We have to do the same thing with our hair. And so the moisturizers and creams that you use for your skin, you have to do the same thing. You have to have a high quality, organic, natural, no chemicals to put on your hair to support the growth and keeping it from breakage. And then your third piece of advice? These things that you can do for your hair is to never ever sleep on cotton or any other material other than satin and silk. So one of the things that I do is I have a silk pillowcase mm -hmm. and it's mine. It's not my husband. He cannot sleep. If he wants his own, he got to get his own. So what happens if you sleep, if you don't sleep on satin or silk, it depletes moisture from your hair. And what happens when the moisture is not in your hair, your hair breaks. And again, you go through that whole Halle Berry haircut thing. Halle Berry, your hair look good. Don't, don't get me wrong. But normally when people want to do a chop, it's because their hair is damaged. So I told people to sleep with a bonnet on their head or get a silk pillowcase. And that way the moisture will stay in your hair. Okay. And uh, tag on to that. So does it help for us to wear a headscarf or something when we are changing our clothes or when we're going to the gym, when we're in the shower, um, what other instances should we wear, cover our hair? So the whole shower thing, uh, if you have natural hair, especially with no chemicals, uh, no, no perm or anything like that, no straighteners for our Caucasian sisters, um, putting on a plastic cap, shower cap, it's so good to hold in that moisture. If you're not washing your hair, go ahead and put that plastic bag on your head and it'll give your hair some life with that moisture. And when you step out of that shower and then you use some of my hair oil, that will seal in that moisture because that's what hair oil is for. It seals in moisture. Okay. All right. Well, Thank you so much for that extra piece of information. And like I said, I'm guilty of it too. I get lazy. I know better too, because I get, you know, when you have locks, you get lint. Sometimes you can't get it out. You might have to dye your hair. And so I know better, but thank you for the reminder. I really do appreciate it. Not your mama's hair grease. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sent you a sample. You did, but I didn't put it on my, my locks because again, I'm new, so I didn't know if it was gonna um, clog up my locks. And I use a clarifying shampoo so they can stay tight. Mm -hmm. So I shared it with my daughter and she likes it. It smells okay. good, it's awesome. I told you I had to put her on notice, like, hey, back up, this is my stuff. <laughs> but so I love one, of, that. one of the things I wanna tell you about this, uh, especially to address what you just said about you didn't know if it was gonna clog up your locks. Mm -hmm. um, this, it's a hair balm and it's very, very light. It looks like when you open it, it looks like it's thick, mm -hmm. but it's very, very light and it will not clog up your locks. This is what I use on my locks. Okay. Um, this is why I created it for myself <laughs> because I needed something, first of all, that smelled good, that was chemical free and that would support not clogging up my hair and I don't know if any if you can see that can you see that it looks very light mm -hmm. it's very very light it's just like the oil okay it's, it's very very light once it melts down and so that's why they call it a hair balm and it has the same properties as the oil so everyone uh whether you prefer using an oil or a balm they're bas they basically do very very similar things Mm -hmm. So I wanted you to try it just to see which one you prefer. So maybe when you get a chance, you can try it because it's not going to clog up your locks. It's actually the thing that I, my locks actually loves. It keeps my hair moist, very, very moist. I'm going to go upstairs and snatch it back. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know my mom's going to, um, she's going to be happy 
Anytime I get hair care products or skincare products, she gets a copy of it too. So um, thank you for sending my, if you go on her site, she has contests or um, her, in her Facebook group. And I'm going to post that link. She has contests. And if you win the contest, you get samples like in my group. So she sent my sample to my mom because my mom wanted to try it out. And since I already had some, I decided not to be greedy and share. <laughs> Being a uh, business owner is so, so very scary, you know, uh, because it has its highs and its lows. Oh. And, and, you know, I've worked and at UIC, like I said earlier, for 17 years. And I love the work that I've accomplished at UIC. I work in the education department in Chicago. And um, being my own business owner has been rewarding in a whole different light for me. Yes. Even though, you know, it has its highs and lows, no matter how low it is, no matter how high it is, it's mine and, and it's something that I'm very, very passionate about. These are my products that I created and I wanna share with people to support their hair, hair journey based on what it is that I've went through. I connect with so many similarity, you know, no, no matter what color they are, we've all experienced some kind of hair scare story, you know? And so no matter where I am, people always feel connected to me. When they look at my photos and they see that I've had so many different scares throughout my years, it's so rewarding to make someone smile when, I, when they try my products. People actually can text me, call me, talk to me about their journeys. I do turn my phone off at a certain time. <laughs> <laughs> But I am very accessible because I stand by what it is that I'm doing. And I want to talk to people and answer their questions and understand what it is that they're looking for. And you can't get that when you walk into a beauty supply store. No. You know, and a lot of times when you go to a beauty salon, the uh, beautician is very busy, you know. You only have a, a certain window of time with that person. And the questions, and I'm not saying that I'm a beautician by any means, but sometimes they don't have the time to help you figure out what it is that you need. And there are some wonderful, wonderful beauticians out there. But then there are some who are very, very busy because they're on a schedule. Mm -hmm. So when you can connect with someone about a journey that you're going through, it helps to make the process that much less difficult yes and um and thank you for bringing up the, the entrepreneur journey because in the group that i have there are a lot of entrepreneurs uh we have a store owner um we have another maker we have a couple of makers um i have an editor um Amanda, I buy my, my makeup from her. She's like the only one who can color match me online <laughs> and I'm not break out and stuff. Thank you. Um, we have so many different entrepreneurs. And so it, you're ab absolutely right. You know, the journey is rewarding in its own way. There's high and lows. And, um, you know, it, it's nice to meet other women entrepreneurs out there who can continue to spread the encouragement and the love. And when I, when I initially started, I, I have these, um, these, th this one thing that I want to say, I was overspending because I wasn't sure about how much product I needed or how much advertisement I needed because I was doing everything by myself. <coughs> and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do everything by yourself, but I've learned to open myself up to the wonderful possibilities of, you know, asking for help and getting support mm. because I overwhelmed myself. I know that I'm creative and I was like, mm -mm, I can do that. <laughs> and it became overwhelming and taxing. So, you know, I was overspending and I was overspending myself, my time. And so I began to, you know, look at those two areas and work on how I could better, you know, better, better use my time 
mm -hmm. their money to better use. Um, and the other thing too, when I first started, I launched a Indigo campaign and I was very, very nervous about it. I thought people were going to be talking about me. I thought my friends and family were going to be like, um, why are you asking for money? You work for whatever, whatever. So why do you need to, you know, I was very nervous because I don't, I, I'm not the one to ask people for things. Yeah. I'm the one to give. And so I'm bringing that up because I want to encourage somebody who is thinking about opening a business. Don't, you know, you have not because you ask not. Exactly. And so I want to tell real, really quick, cause I know we're probably out of time. Um, I asked for $5,000 for my Indigo campaign. You can go online and Google me and you'll see it. And I had such a good time doing it. And um, my family, my family, my friends, a lot of people rallied and a lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't. And I was really hurt, you know, and surprised by many. But I'll say this real quick. I had the most surprising news and gift that happened to me during that process. I had helped this woman a long time ago, um, maybe about seven years ago. I met her right up the street from my house at a restaurant and she was in need she needed support she was going through something with her husband very 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 devastating and i i took her to get something to eat and i took her home and she was scared to go in the house i i, I told her i would wait for her because she wanted to go to her next destination and i did when i did this indigo campaign five or six years whatever it was later she came to my job and she wrote me a check for the remaining the remaining balance of what I, what I needed from that Indigo campaign. And I'm going to try not to cry. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this was a perfect strange, stranger to me. Sorry, guys. Um, it's okay. It's real. It's real. <laughs> and um, I didn't think that I was going to make my Indigo campaign. And I wasn't worried about it. I knew that whatever was going to happen was going to happen and it happened. And so I encourage you all, if you're thinking about starting something, if you're thinking about, you can't do it, get those thoughts out of your head, whatever God has for you is for you. And no one can take that away. All you have to do is step out on faith, keep moving, put one foot in front of the other and what's going to happen will happen. I'm a living testimony of that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that because um, some days <laughs> you need to get all the encouragement um, you can get. And I just humble, want to humbly thank you and tell you that I am so proud of your work. Oh. I feel like you're my, my sister from another mother, from another father, I should say. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and it's, it's so humbling to see that the work you're doing, not just with your business, but outside your business, as far as um, vet, veteran uh, uh, women. Oh, thank you. I think that's so powerful. And I, I encourage you to continue doing that work. And please let me know if you need me to come to visit you and support any events or anything you're doing. I would definitely get on a plane and come and support you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you. I, I, I feel the same. Like, I, we've only met like, maybe six or eight weeks ago, you know, and it was through a group and it, we were talking about food. And then I ended up like sharing everybody I had gotten my Peter certificate and it just rolled out from there. And so it's really nice to meet another maker. Um, and I have other maker friends and they're awesome, but it's nice to add on to the group of makers that you're friends with, because only we understand what it's like to make a product from scratch and having to formulate it and not copy somebody else's recipe. Like you actually sit down and figure out the percentages and the fragrances and understand it takes like six to eight months to come up with the product. And you know, this product worked and now nobody wants it or somebody loves it. And so welcome to the family. Welcome to the welcome. I know you've been in business way longer than me, but welcome to my group of, of maker friends and you know, if it, whatever I can do to share my network with you, I will. Thank you. I appreciate it. So we are going to wrap up on that inspiring note. Thank you for sharing that.